Hey, Amy. Good morning, everyone. We will get started in about five minutes. Um, would somebody mind posting if they can hear the subtle music in the background? Morning, Ash. <laughs> Ash, can you hear the music? Okay, cool. Thanks, Teresa. It's really, really weird for me to be talking to people that can't talk back. Um, so I think the next 30 minutes are going to be really interesting. I'm excited, you know, I haven't stepped out of my comfort zone in about a week. So <laughs> I'm sure other people are feeling that way too. I also want to put it on the record that I ate a chocolate chip cookie for breakfast this morning. So that's where I am today. <laughs> hey, Aunt Karen. I'm glad that people are joining. I'm glad that we can move together this morning. Um, I think before social distancing, my home practice was almost non-existent. So I'm taking this as a moment to be reflective and thankful that this is making me come back to my home, come back to practicing in my own home um, and learning ways to move here even with my dog and my job being here and my husband. So just looking for the bright side of things, right? Morning, Laura. We'll get going here in just about three minutes. Yes, Amy, coffee and yoga go together perfectly. Just, you know, whatever pose we get in, you can sip your coffee there. Morning, Maris. Morning, Christy. True. Somebody posted, uh, tea is better than coffee for yoga. It is. But, you know, whatever you need this morning. Ashley, uh, Barkley is locked in a bedroom right now, so I appeased him with a peanut butter Kong. We're hoping that that peanut butter Kong will last uh, 35 minutes this morning. Um, otherwise, he may make an entry at some point, um, but that'll be okay. He needs his away time from me as well. We, uh, we've been spending a lot of time together lately, so Barkley, my dog, is uh, he's good to be alone right now. <laughs> Audrey <laughs> posting about Prosecco and orange juice. You know, we could do that with yoga too. I heard uh, and then the down low that maybe Ashley might be doing an at home beer yoga next weekend. So something to think about. All right, it's just about nine o'clock. So why don't we start to find ourselves coming to our mat? Morning, Sherry. And just find ourselves beginning to just come to a space where for the next 30 minutes we can breathe 
We can be present in our bodies. And we can just do a little yoga together. I tailored this class this morning to be about 30 minutes um, because I know Sunday mornings can be times of maybe places that other places you want to be in your home. Um, but I also wanted to make it 30 minutes so this is a place that you could come back during the week that if you want to replay this video, you can go ahead and do so um, and just allow yourself just a, a quick little movement session. Uh, so if and when you are ready, find a comfortable seat on your mat allowing yourself to find those sits bones connecting into the earth beginning to build length in that spine maybe offering that stacking of the vertebrae and if it's comfortable for you bring your eyes to close hands can fall where comfortable and just notice what it feels like to be inside of your body Notice the spaces of openness. Notice without judgment the spaces that maybe feel a little tight. Connecting in with all of those places. And begin to find the breath traveling in through the nostrils and out of the nostrils. Finding the lips to come to a seal if you can and just notice the breath here first. And on your next inhale, send that breath in through the nostrils. Let it go back in the back of the throat and down into the belly, into that abdominal region. Let those abdomens expand, fill up with that breath. And then as you exhale, it returns to neutral, breath leaving the body through the nostrils. Continuing to find this breath, almost sink all the way down into that hip region that lower abdominal space. On your next inhale, really send that breath down nice and deep and then inhale just a little bit more. Allow that rib cage to start to come apart. Filling up all this space with this breath and then as you exhale, ribs come back together. Belly button pulls back in toward the spine. Next inhale, you'll fill up that lower abdomen. Let the ribs start to come apart and finally lift the chest up toward the sky, beginning to find this three-part breath, lengthening, filling all the way up with that nice, rich oxygen. And as you exhale, chest falls, ribs come back together, belly button into neutral. Noticing the length that we begun to build without even thinking about it. Knowing at any point during our practice today, if our minds begin to wander, if we start to think about going someplace else, we can bring the awareness right back here, right back to this space of this breath. From this comfortable seat, feeling those sits bones in the earth, we'll go ahead and inhale, lift the arms up long in front of us, reach those fingertips up toward the sky, Think about that length coming out of the arms, breathing. As you exhale, right hand comes back behind that right hip, left hand on that right knee. As you twist open, gaze can come back over that right shoulder. Inhale for length, exhale as you twist open. Your next inhale, you'll rise up through center. And an exhale will allow you to find that right hand on that left knee, left arm behind, left hand behind that left hip as you twist open toward that opposite side. Still taking those nice deep belly breaths. 
Inhale as you rise back up through your center. Your right arm will come down next to that right hand. Reach the left fingertips over to the right. Think about here pulling that left shoulder back, opening up that heart space. The world right now is telling us to protect our heart, to round in. Allow yourself this moment to open up that chest. Lift your hearts to the sky. As you inhale, coming up through center and then exhale that left hand down, reach open toward that opposite side. Pull that right shoulder back, opening up here. Inhale as we rise up through center. We'll exhale, bring those hands back behind us. Fingertips will point in toward the hip bones. Option here to just find that small little C shape in the spine, leaving the crown of the head lifted. If you want a little bit more and it feels good for you, the crown of the head can fall toward the back of the room. A final variation here, if you'd like a little more, is to lift the hips up, roll onto the knees, finding that full C shape in the spine. I mean, that's a lot of big movement this morning. So being kind to your body. If you lifted the hips, go ahead, allow them to lower. If you allowed the crown of the head to fall toward the back of your room, go ahead and slowly lift it back through center and then slowly walk those fingertips back forward. We'll inhale for our final spinal movement as we reach the fingertips up toward the sky. Exhale as we hinge forward. We can take a slight hinge, just allowing the hands to find the earth. I know you can't see my fingertips from here, but they're just resting on the rug. If you'd like a little more, you can begin to round that spine in, almost bringing the forehead down toward the earth. I talked about our final spinal movement. We found our twist to each side. We found our side bend. We back bend. And then our sixth movement is that fold in. We'll slowly begin to walk the fingertips back in toward us, coming back to that fine, that comfortable seat. Hands can rest on the hips here. And we'll just take a little more engagement of the spine here with some cats and cows. So we'll inhale as we press the abdomen forward, lift the gaze towards the sky, pull the shoulders down away from the ears, cow pose. Exhale, begin to start rounding at the spine at the lower end, rounding everything in. Last thing to come in is that head. These seated cats and cows are great places where you can just find a little movement. If you're working at a desk job during the week and maybe your desk job now is at your home, I always recommend these just to remind your spine that it's okay to move. It's okay to find broths with that movement. And then when you are ready, we'll roll over the knees onto the hands or find ourselves coming into a tabletop space. So we'll bring the hands beneath the shoulders, knees below the hips, and we'll begin to engage through that cat and cow once more. So this time we'll take that inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly, lift the gaze. Leading that breath from the tailbone, we'll exhale, take that tailbone down, lift the spine vertebrae by vertebrae, and then let the head hang heavy. Let this pose evolve and move with your breath. So if that is not good for you, you can find those spinal movements where you find that snake-like. Maybe you barrel roll that chest. Maybe you're feeling a little more movement this morning and you wanna press through to an up dog or a cobra and press back to a child's pose. Taking this moment right here to listen to what your body wants, what your body needs. Three more breaths. And then when you are ready, we will tuck the toes under, begin to lift the hips up and back, finding our downward facing dog. Knowing this may be your first down dog of the day, of the week, of the month, maybe ever. If this is your first yoga class, that's okay. It doesn't need to look any sort of way. We're simply lifting the hips up toward the sky, maybe walking out the dog, bending really deep into one knee and then the other. Breathing. Pressing evenly into both hands. And then ever so slowly, we'll begin to press those heels down into the earth and begin to walk the hands back toward us. This may mean a nice deep bend in the knees. That's okay, however you need to get there. From here, we'll just hang out in a forward fold. So this forward fold is for you. 
So you can keep that bend in the knees if you want. Press that chest and belly toward the tops of the thighs. Fingertips can come down to the earth. Maybe you find that rag doll and you sway side to side. We'll slowly roll ourselves all the way up when ready. Stack each vertebrae upon the one below it. Last thing to lift is the chin. We'll take those shoulders up towards the ears, roll them down and away. Finding ourselves standing tall on our mat, I will simply turn my body so I'm facing you. You can stay right where you are. We'll inhale as we sweep the arms up toward the sky. And as we exhale, we'll take that right arm, slide it down that right side of the body as we reach over to the right. This is a good view, chopped my head right off. <laughs> inhale, take the fingertips up toward the sky. And then we'll take that side bend over toward that opposite side. Another interesting thing about teaching yoga to an audience that can't hear you is if you crack a joke, like, yeah, I'm just over here thinking I'm funny. Take that right hand down. Find yourself coming through center. We'll inhale, sweep the arms up towards the sky once more. This time that right arm's gonna come back behind that right leg, right behind that right glute. Reach in towards that right hamstring. Gaze up past those left fingertips. I know you can't see mine. They're right reaching up toward the sky. And then we'll exhale as we do nice, Deep bend in the left leg. Right leg stays nice and long. Left fingertips sweep down to the floor. We could stay right here just finding that stretch in that right leg or if we'd like more in a variation here, you can go ahead and take the right fingertips up toward the sky, twisting open. Breathe. Take those right fingertips down toward the earth. Slowly roll yourself all the way up to standing. Take the shoulders up toward the ears, roll them down and away. This time that left hand is gonna come back behind that left leg, reach in for that left hamstring. Send those right fingertips up toward the sky. Gaze up into that right hand. And then exhale, bend into that right knee, hinging in. Right fingertips come down toward the earth in front of that bent right leg. Left leg's nice and long, and then sweep those left fingertips up toward the sky. Thinking about the breath. Thinking about where we're finding the stretch. Take the left fingertips down and you'll slowly roll yourself all the way up to standing. Last thing to lift is that chin. Just gonna turn my body so I'm facing my mat the way that it is, the long way. I'm gonna find myself coming to the top of my mat, nice and tall, and I, as I inhale, I'm gonna take the arms up toward the sky, bring that left knee in, finding that marchers or marionette pose, finding the balance, knowing this morning you might be a little wobbly. And then a really big movement here. We're gonna send that left leg out long behind us, coming into a low lunge. So. It doesn't matter how wide it is here. Take what your body needs. If you wanna be nice and close together, go right ahead. If you'd like a little more, send that left leg back behind you. Sink into that right leg, left heel up toward the sky. You can take the gaze out right in front of you or maybe you take the gaze up past those fingertips, begin to find that C shape in the spine. As you exhale, bring those hands down, begin to lower that left knee. We're coming into a low supported lunge here. Untucking the toes on the left foot, even though you can't see them, into this low supported lunge. We'll inhale as we sweep the arms up. Exhale as we sweep the arm, right arm back behind us, twisting open to the right. Inhale as we rise, coming back through center. And then exhale, hinge at the hips. Left hand's gonna come to the inside of that right foot. We'll find that supported dragonfly twist. Reach those right fingertips up towards the sky. Variation option here, tuck the toes on the left foot. Come up through that high dragonfly twist if you'd like. Again, that's a variation optional. You're getting that same twisting movement by leaving that foot on the earth. Take those right fingertips down, bring it to the inside of that right foot. We'll set up for our dragon pose here. Everybody knows that's my favorite. 
So scoot that right leg out just a bit, walking it over toward the right side of the mat. Hands can come down to the palms. Maybe you're feeling really bendy in the hips already and you can come all the way down to the forearms. You know what I'm gonna try to do? I'm going to try to tilt this down just a little bit. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> Whole new place, you guys. <laughs> And then from here, we'll slowly just begin to rise back up. So coming back onto those fingertips, begin to press the hips back, keep that right heel right where it is. We'll find that half splits. So option to keep the hip right over the knee. You can sink those hips all the way back. Or maybe you're working on that split space and you wanna walk that right heel forward just a bit. Just listening, just noticing. Slowly begin to walk yourself forward, pressing down into that right heel. We'll tuck the toes on the left foot. Big movement here, stepping into that low lunge. Hands will frame that front right foot, and then we'll slowly just begin to sink all of the weight into that right foot. And we're just gonna take a little hop. Hop that left foot forward, hop that left foot forward, hop that left foot forward, left foot forward and coming into a forward fold. Bending one knee and then the other. Saying hello to the backs of those legs. And slowly rolling yourself up to standing. We'll take that all on the other side as we inhale, sweep the arms up, bringing them through heart center. Inhale once more, send those fingertips up toward the sky. Find that marcher's marionette on the right side. Flex through that right foot. And then we get ready to step back for that big movement. So we're stepping that right leg all the way back for that lunge pose. Knowing you can take this as close or as far apart as you would like, taking those arms up toward the sky, sinking into that left leg. Remembering gaze can go forward or reach it up past the fingertips. Exhale, you'll begin to lower down, bringing the hands down to frame that front left foot. We'll untuck the toes on the right. Find that shin coming down onto the earth. Inhale as you rise back up into that low supported lunge. Sweeping that left arm back this time, T twisting open toward that opposite side. Inhale, come back through center. Gazing up past those fingertips, we'll take that right hand down to the inside of that left foot. Sweep those left fingertips up toward the sky. Finding that low dragonfly twist option here, tucking the toes on that right foot, coming up into that lifted form. Listening to your body this morning, what it needs, what it wants. Take that left hand down, lower that knee if you lifted it. We'll begin to inchworm that left leg over to the other side of our mat, allowing that left hand to come to the inside. We'll find that dragon pose. So find the variation that feels good for you. Maybe this side you're like, nope, I'm on those cupcake fingertips, those fingertips that we imagine there's a cupcake under our hand. Maybe we come down to the forearms. Maybe we come to a comfortable seat because like you, or like me rather, you don't like dragon pose and that's okay. We'll slowly begin to rise back up out of that dragon pose. We'll keep that left heel right where it is. Begin to sink those hips back over that right knee. Lift those toes up toward the sky. Find the length in the leg. Finding that half split. Allowing yourself to move, explore this space. Remembering the breath, remembering to send that breath down into that lower abdomen. And then slowly begin to walk yourself forward, pressing down into that left foot, tucking the toes on the right, we'll come back through that low lunge. So you can stay right here, stay on the palms of the hands and begin to walk that right leg into you. Maybe you're looking for a bigger movement here, you bring the hands to heart center, sink all the way into that left foot and step that right foot up nice and tall. Slowly find yourself coming into a standing forward fold. And 
and then find yourself rolling all the way up. Roll the shoulders down, away from the ears, shake it out. Taking a little balance movement this morning. I love this. It's just a body. That's all yoga is, right? Just a body. <laughs> so we'll root our left foot into the earth. Maybe that means stepping off your mat, depending on where you are. My carpet's really squishy, so I'm gonna rely on my mat. Sink that left foot in. Hands can start here at the hips and we'll explore that tree space. So that can start by just kickstanding that right heel up onto that left ankle bone. Stay right here if you'd like. Feel the rooting. Maybe that foot comes the inside of that shin or the calf, opening up that knee. From here, if you're feeling really stable in that root you've created, hands can come through to heart center. Maybe you grow your branches. I'll take my branches down here so you guys can see them. Taking a moment here, just feel how strong your foundation is. Coming back and maybe reflecting on how strong you are. Release the hands down, release the foot down, shake it out. We'll set up for that balance on the opposite side. So this time that right foot's gonna really root into the earth. Feel all four corners of that foot pressing in. And then just begin to find that right heel kick up. Maybe bringing it to the inside. Maybe you take an option here and we find those prayer hands, but we bring them back behind the back and we find them at the lower spine. Opening up that chest, lifting the heart to the sky. Breathe. Releasing those hands, bring that left foot down to the mat, shaking it out. Sending some gratitude to both those legs for holding us up. We'll go ahead and we'll inhale as we sweep the arms up towards the sky. Exhale as we swan dive out through our forward fold. We'll inhale to a halfway lift and we'll just take one half vinyasa in our practice this morning. So we'll put a nice deep bend in the knees, plant the hands on the mat, step the feet back to find a high plank pose. So this high plank, we're gonna spend a breath or two here. Pull the belly button in toward the spine. Feel the shoulders down away from the ears. Find that length. Breathe. You'll only be here for a moment. It's only temporary. Breathe. Bring the knees down to the mat. We'll find that supported chaturanga. So finding that yoga push up, if you will, bending the elbows, maybe they begin to slide across the ribs. Find that hover just above the earth and then press into the palms. Lift into your cobra or all the way up into your up dog. Breathe. We'll hang out here for a moment. Take the gaze over the right shoulder. Nice deep back bend. Take the gaze through center. Gaze over the opposite shoulder. Gaze back through center. And then you can begin to tuck the toes under on both of those feet. Lift the hips all the way up towards the sky, finding a downward facing dog. Taking a moment here to notice if the backs of the legs feel any different than the beginning of class. And then we'll take a big movement here. Lift that right leg up toward the sky. Bend, twist, open. Try to kick yourself in the bottom. And then we'll take that right leg back up with an inhale. As we exhale, step it all the way under and through. Right knee comes to the right wrist. We're taking the toes over toward the left. Inchworm that left leg back. So before we go anywhere, let's just sink in here. Thinking about both those hips being even. We're not rolling on to one side more than the other. And then as you begin to exhale, we'll begin to fold in, finding our, or excuse me, our sleeping pigeon pose. So you could stay here on the forearms. Maybe you come all the way down to the belly. Slowly rising back up. We're gonna do something said we wouldn't do. We're gonna roll onto that right hip. As we do that, we're going to sweep that left leg out around in front of us. So I'm just turning towards you. You don't have to turn towards me. And we'll just find a stacking here. 
and our shoelace pose. So options, not options, both of those sits bones are still connecting to the earth. So we're trying to aim to get that right knee, excuse me, that left knee to stack on top of the right. But if you notice, mine doesn't want to do that, otherwise my sit bones begin to lift. So we can just find the stacking. We can take an option of an eagle arm here with that left leg on top. We can take the arms up to a T, left arm on bottom, bend the elbows, bring the palms and the hands together. Lift the elbows up to shoulder height. Maybe you gaze through that little keyhole that you created. Unraveling the arms, unraveling the legs. We'll come through our downward facing dog once more because we're so fortunate to have two legs at this point that we can go ahead and do this on the opposite side. Take that left leg, lift it, bend, twist, open. Ooh, don't fall over. And then bring that left foot all the way under and through to set up for that pigeon on the opposite side. Inchworm that right leg back. Feel those hips nice and square and then begin to fold in. Breathe. Slowly begin to rise back up. We'll roll onto that left hip. We'll sweep that right arm out in front of us. Find that shoelace pose on the opposite side. Remembering those sits bones connecting in with the mat. We can take those eagle arms, take the arms out. Right arm comes under the left, bend the elbows, bring the hands up toward the sky. Release the arms. Find yourself sweeping the legs out long in front of you. And then we'll find ourselves coming down onto our backs. So bring the soles of the feet to the earth. Arms long side like we were gonna go to a boat, but lucky you, we don't have time for a boat. You can always do one. This is your practice, not mine. <laughs> and then we'll just begin to come all the way down to the earth. Finding ourselves coming to our mats, finding the back side of the body beginning to come down to the earth. Finding the length in the body, we'll reach the fingertips up overhead, point through the toes. Take an inhale through the nose, filling all the way up with breath. And then as you exhale, let that breath out of your mouth and then scrunch everything in. Find yourself in a tiny little bow. Squeeze your knees in, grab those hands, lift the nose to the knees. You're so tiny. And then release the head. Take the arms out to a T. And on your next exhale, the knees will fall over to the left. You can gaze over that opposite right shoulder. Breathing into this twist. The space that aids in our digestion. Take those knees up through center. And then as you exhale, allow them to fall over toward that opposite side. If you'd like, that gaze can go over that opposite shoulder. Remembering those are just variations. Do what feels good for you. We'll bring ourselves back through center, finding ourselves coming back through that squeeze one more time, taking this moment to reflect, to do something that one of my favorite yoga teachers always tells us to do. Take this moment to tell ourselves that we love ourselves. And then slowly begin to release out, right leg coming to the right corner of the mat, left leg coming to the left corner, Arms can be long side the body, palms up toward the sky, looking to receive all that positive energy. Maybe you flip the palms down to really root in, found that foundation. Or that right hand can come to the heart, left hand to the belly. As you allow yourself to settle in, to find this place where we let it all go. And we take our yoga rest.
slowly begin to bring awareness to your body. Maybe that just starts by noticing the breath once more. Maybe you wiggle the fingers and the toes. Roll the wrists and the ankles. Allow the head to fall side to side. And then take a moment to roll onto your favorite side. Finding this fetal like pose. And then using whatever hand is on the earth to press in, bring yourself all the way up and around to find a seat. Coming back to the space where we started our practice just 30 short minutes ago, but maybe taking a scan, taking notice of what feels different, how things have changed, and knowing that just like last week things are different this week things will be different next week and out of all of this craziness and everything that's happening in our lives right now I'd like to remind ourselves of maybe a little lesson we learned as a child remember being a child and maybe being put into a timeout and told to reflect back on what I did and take a moment to find my breath to settle in and maybe this time, this pause in our lives is just telling us to settle in, to find our breath. And just like when we were children, the more you fight that time out, the more you're like, I'm done, I'm ready. The more the time out tells you, nope, just a little bit longer. So I want you to take that into your week. Just know that you can breathe through this. Just know that we here at Soul Shine are here for you. And whether it's easy to believe or not, I know in my heart that it will all be okay. That final inhale, find your hands coming to a comfortable place. Bringing your eyes to close and bowing your chin in toward your chest. Taking this moment of gratitude Gratitude for our bodies. Gratitude for our many blessings. And most importantly, gratitude for this breath. As we inhale, we'll lift our chins, allow our light to shine, and know that the love and the light within me honors and is so thankful to connect with you, even virtually, with that love and light within each of you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'll be back Wednesday, April 1st with some yin, so keep your eyes peeled. Namaste, friends. Have a great Sunday. I'll see you all soon. I look forward to it very much.